We're now going to turn our attention to circuits that pass only a limited bandwidth or a certain range of frequencies while attenuating other frequencies. This is what's known as a bandpass filter. So what we're, we're going to find is that at lower frequencies, the uh, or components oscillating at lower frequencies are attenuated. Components oscillating at higher frequencies are attenuated. And there's a relatively narrow band of mid-range frequencies that are passed through the circuit. To understand this, we've drawn this circuit showing the explicit frequency dependence of both the capacitive impedance and the inductive impedance. And we're going to look at this at three different frequencies. The omega equals zero frequency. At omega equals zero, the impedance of the inductor, J omega L, is zero. At DC, an inductor is just basically a straight wire. On the other hand, at DC, when omega equals zero, a capacitor is basically an open circuit or an infinite capacitance. So at omega equals zero, we have then effectively our source, V of S, the capacitor is an open circuit. The inductor is a short circuit. And we've got our resistance here where we're taking the output. But because this is an open circuit, none of the energy in the signal, in the input signal, makes it through the capacitor and uh, through the capacitor to the resistor. So at omega equals zero, V out equals zero. On the other hand, at omega, or as omega tends toward infinity, now at infinite, at omega equals infinity, or <laughs> as it tends toward infinity, the impedance of the inductor becomes very, very large and tends toward infinity also. On the other hand, the inverse dependence on omega causes the impedance of the capacitor to tend toward zero as omega tends towards infinity. And so under these circumstances, we have then our source, V in of S. Now at the higher frequencies, the capacitor is basically a short circuit, but the inductor is an open circuit. There's our resistor across which we're taking the output voltage. And in this circumstance, V out is also equal to zero. So at the stream mix ends of the frequency spectrum, or the frequency uh, axis, um, the, the signals oscillating those frequencies are blocked, not passed, rejected, whatever you want to call it, but somewhere in the middle, something funny happens. To understand that, let's look at the series, the equivalent impedance of the series combination of the capacitor and the inductor. Well, that's simply 1 over J omega C plus J omega L. Now, if we combine these, we need to get a common denominator, and we will end up with then one. Now, when we our common denominator is J omega C, so we need to multiply this term by J omega C over J omega C to get the common denominator. When we do so, we get J times J, that's equal to a minus one times omega squared times L times C. And we notice that here in the numerator, we have 1 minus something else. Well, the funny thing that happens is that at a certain frequency, this term omega squared LC with a minus sign in front of it equals 1. And we end up with 1 minus 1 is 0. At some frequency, the impedance of the series combination of those two actually goes to 0. To find out what that is, let's set the numerator equal to 0. We have 1 minus omega squared LC equals 0, or omega squared LC equals 1, or omega squared equals LC, or omega equals oops, 1 over LC up here. So that omega then equals the square root of 1 over LC, or 1 over the square root of LC. That frequency of oscillation that causes the series combination to go to zero is known as the resonance frequency that we call omega naught. 
Now, that's the same thing as the natural frequency that we ran into back when we were doing classical differential equation analysis of series RLC circuits. And you'll recall back then that natural frequency, or the, nat the uh, resonant frequency, was in fact 1 over the square root of LC. Thus, this quantity, 1 over the square root of LC, is a characteristic quantity of this circuit. And we now understand why it's called the natural or the resonant frequency, because of that frequency, these two impedances resonate at equal but opposite amounts. In other words, this gives a negative quantity, this gives a positive quantity, and the combination of those two add to zero. So at this natural, or we're also going to refer to it as the center frequency of our bandpass filter, we have the situation where we have our input signal, V in of S. Now the inductor and the capacitor cancel each other's effects and effectively become a short circuit. And our output voltage taken across the resistor is simply equal to is simply equal to the input at that frequency.